What's up guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Now today's video, I'm going to be telling you a story and I'm going to be showing you how to explode and accelerate your sales with your business. Now here's a couple of questions that I'm going to ask you before we kind of dig into the meat of this video. And, um, these are three questions you want to be honest about. All right. Number one, what is preventing you from closing more clients over the next 30 days? What is it? What's the real thing? Don't just say, uh, I suck at marketing. What's the real thing that's stopping you from doing that? All right. That's number one. Number two, what is your biggest distraction that is preventing you from accomplishing your business goal, right? When you identify that and you stop being distracted, you will be able to accelerate your results with your sales, right? Then number three, what self-limiting beliefs do you have about yourself? Only you can answer that. I can't come knock on your door. Me and Cowboy can't ride over and gallop over to your house and ask what your biggest self limiting beliefs are. Only you are going to know that. And here's what we want to do. You write out your, the questions I just asked, write down the answers. And I want you to look at that for two hours a day. All right. I want you to stare at that piece of paper and see why am I not doing these things? Like what, what is my biggest self limiting belief? And that's what today's video is about. It's about overcoming self-limiting beliefs so you can accelerate within your business. You can have more sales. You have more income. You have more freedom. You get the stuff that you dream about and you talk about and probably stuff you talk about on Instagram all the time. Here's the thing, though. It's very important. I'm going to lead off with, you, with this. Most coaches don't take their own advice that they give their own clients. They'll tell, you'll tell your clients to be confident, to not be afraid of failure, to uh, overcome limiting beliefs. And then you get back in the car and you're like, man, like, I know I could be doing better with my business right now. I know I could be generating more income. And then when you look at yourself in the mirror, you are not doing the things that you tell your clients. Coaches are notorious for doing that. How do I know? I talk to coaches every day. If you have not reached out to me, here's my number, 210-960-5771. Text me. I will get back to you. I've talked to coaches for hours every day, right? So let's think about this. If you have these self-limiting beliefs of, well, maybe, maybe I, sh I don't deserve to make this much money. Uh, maybe I can't make this much because I don't know anyone who's making this much. Like whatever it is, that needs to be written down on your piece of paper, right? And this is very personal to me. And uh, this is a long story. So buckle up here, right? I'm going to go into as much detail as I can. And I'm going to show you how I turned a negative when I was younger into a positive now, all right? So where you are right now, all right, let's just be very clear. The decisions you make, how you think, uh, what you do, how you act, how you operate, all of that was determined when you were younger. And then you're, as you become an adult, you just continue doing the same things you did when you're younger, the way your parents taught or the way those who you spent time, like however they instructed you on how to live, that's what you ended up doing. And you probably have the same habits as your parents do, or you have the same habits as those who you surround yourself with that they have. All right. So knowing that, okay, bear with me when, when I, when I go through the story, it's going to click and make sense when you start to think about yourself, right? So I remember very vividly, it was in the spring of my seventh grade year, right? 
I was going through puberty. Really fun time for a young boy, <laughs> right? My voice was cracking, super annoying. Every time I spoke, it was like, ah! right? You know what I'm talking about. And I'll never forget. Uh, it was my history class. We had an oral presentation. And before I knew that, like, my whole life when I was younger, I was very shy, very timid, very afraid to speak. And because I was afraid, I would kind of hesitate. I would be jittery when I would talk. So I just chose to shut the F up when I was young. All right? Didn't speak up. I shut up because I was afraid to talk. All right? Now, that was, that was how it was when I was young. When I got to seventh grade, it was still like that. Now on top of that, I was going through puberty. So imagine someone who's really shy, they're going through puberty, their voice is all ah, cracky, right? And that was the situation, right? And I remember we had like, I think it was like one month to prepare for this stupid presentation. And uh, my presentation was about Thomas Jefferson. And uh, I knew that it was like, I think it was like a five to eight minute presentation that I had to give in front of like 15 people in my, in my class. And most of those people I was friends with. So like, these were people I already knew I was with them all day. And, uh, as we got closer to the presentation, I kept telling myself, man, this is going to suck. And I'm afraid to talk and what what's going to happen if I talk and, and my voice cracks, you know, and I visualize this over and over and over in my head and I would be in front of the mirror before the presentation weeks before practicing. Every time I talked, it was like, ah! <laughs> right. And looking back on it, it was really funny. Uh, but at the time I was so freaking nervous. And again, this, this was because, I was kind of preconditioned to be quiet. I wasn't good at talking in front of people. I wasn't, that, that wasn't a normal thing. I, I hated doing that. Okay. So the day uh, before the presentation, uh, the teacher was like, all right, I'm going to write down in order who's going to be going first. All right. So first, second, all the way to 15 people I think we had in our class. And of course, the teacher wrote my name first, right? And I was like, holy crap, I need to figure out how I'm going to get out of going to school tomorrow. <laughs> I was already thinking of how I could get out of it. And this is what a lot of coaches and business owners do when they face something that's difficult that they're not used to. They just try to get out of it and they do get out of it, right? Only problem was I was in seventh grade, so I had to go to school. I couldn't get out of it. And, um, I remember showing up and my voice was extra cracky that day. And we get there and my, all of my friends knew that I hated talking in front of people. Uh, so as the teacher called my name, I walk up and I hear people laughing already. And I was like, man, like, th like this is going to be a nightmare. I was thinking that before. I went up to go do this. And the way the speech started, I started with the words Thomas Jefferson, right? And when I said Jefferson, my voice cracked, right? Exactly like this. It was Thomas Jefferson, <laughs> right? So immediately, everybody was laughing. I looked at the teacher, he was laughing. Everybody was laughing in my face. And I remember how just, I felt it was like traumatizing. It sounds so stupid, right? But it was. And uh, I remember the rest of that speech, it cracked probably over a hundred times and everybody was just laughing the whole time. And I remember after that day, I was like, I am never doing this again. I'm never talking in front of uh, an audience again, ever. Not going to do it. And any time as I got older, when I was in high school and in college, 
if I had an oral presentation, I would just skip it. And it was terrible because that made my grades go down, right? I would skip it. I would find a way out because I was unable to confront what happened when I was younger, right? Now, here's the deal. Several years passed, like as I became an adult, when I started my business, that stuff stayed with me, right? When I'd get on a sales presentation with a parent over the phone, I, that would be lingering in my mind what happened when I was a kid, right? And the craziest thing about it is I let that little thing, which for me, it was a big deal that held me back with so much that I wanted to do with my business that held me back with marketing that held me back with sales that held me back with my confidence. Cause I kept telling myself, well, you're that kid who your voice cracked. And by the way, throughout high school, I always heard same bull crap from people. Oh, Thomas Jefferson kid. Right. Always heard that. And I remember when I was 25 years old, 25, right? This was over a decade after the Thomas Jefferson incident, <laughs> right? I ran into a, to some old classmates. That was the first thing they said, right? Trust me, I'm a very nice, relaxed, chill guy. One of the first times in my life where I wanted to beat someone up, right? just for bringing it up, it brought back old memories. It made me feel inferior again, All right? And here's what I realized, right? And I realized this when I was 26, 27. It took me 27 years of life to figure this out. It was, wow, however I was when I was a kid, all of that stuff affected me as I became older. And if I hang on to that, I'm not going to freaking live up to what I want to do. And am I going to let some little Thomas Jefferson incident dictate what's going to happen in the future? Because I had already let it do that. All right. And the best part about this is once I let go of that and I realize. I need to change here. I need to change who I spend my time with. I need to change how I think about myself. I started investing into mentors, be like pay big dollar amounts to be around people that I want to be like, that I strive to be like, right? Once I started doing that, I realized like, wow, I'm starting to, to think differently about myself now. Like, why am I hanging on to this thing that happened when I was little? that has nothing to do with my future, but I let it for so many years, all right? And my favorite part about the story was after, I think I was 25 when I saw a bunch of old jabronis that I used to go to school with. Uh, I remember that person said that to me and I was like, I am going to like show this person, all right? Ran into same dude last year at the grocery store, brought it up again, all right? And he was like, what are you doing now? And I was like, I have around 90,000 people I'm talking to on the internet. The dude shut up, right? Trying to hold this thing over me still as an adult, right? I could have let him do that the rest of my life. I could have run into him once every 10 years for the rest of my life and just been like, man, I'm back in seventh grade again. Or I could have sacked up like I did. Went to go create a YouTube channel. You go check it out, onlinesolgersouls.com. I mean, we have over 90,000 subscribers at this point. Like I'm going back to that channel. That channel is gonna be popping soon. Got this channel. To, I've helped millions of people, right? I would have never done that though if I would have held on to, to these self-limiting beliefs. Now, why am I telling this? 
it's because you, if you're watching this, you have something that's happening when you're little and I'm not going to be your therapist, right? I'm not doing that. I'm not going to be your shrink, but I am telling you, if you don't get over that thing, you are going to be always living in this little like comfort zone that you'll never get out of. And your business will never expand until you get out of that. That's up to you. You get to decide that, not me. And I'm, I'm willing to be transparent coming on here, telling the world about my problem that I had, right? You should be able to be honest with yourself and tell yourself, all right, I need to stop thinking this way. I need to start doing this. And the person that's going to get in the way of your success, it's going to be you flat out, right? It's not going to be you going to buy a 997 product uh, from some guru. That's not going to save your life, right? It's not going to save your life. The thing that's going to make the change is you have to identify what those things are. That's why if you, if you seriously do what I said at the beginning of this video, right? There's, there's zero reason why in the next two to three years that you don't have a hundred thousand per year business, zero reason. Cause now you've let go of the thing that's in your way and you just go into hunt mode like me. Like when I wake up in the morning, no one's, no one's stopping me. All right. Me and cowboy, we come to this office all day hunt. I help more people. And I'm on a mission, all right? I don't have to think about how it was when I was younger. I don't have to think that, oh, having money is a bad thing. No, it's not, all right? And there's so many other, other little details that, of how I thought when I grew up that affected me when I was older. This is where you have to let go of those things and move forward with the thing that you want. And only you get to do that. You get to make that choice. And I see so many coaches who are so great at coaching that don't move their business forward because of the self-limiting beliefs. It's a shame. And if you're a coach, you should be wanting to help way more kids. Like, and you can think about this on a very deep level, right? And this is sounds crazy, but Let's say you got hit by a bus tomorrow and I hope that doesn't happen. All right. Don't go stand in front of a bus. <laughs> right. But who's going to be there? You're going to have like one or two kids that you train show up or you're going to have thousands of kids that you've impacted be there and be mourning your loss. Right. That's it for today's video. I know this is going to help you. All right. My videos, do not appeal to every, every personal trainer and coach. I don't freaking care. All right. I'm here to help you out. And I know by me sharing my example, that's going to help at least one person, at least one person over the next three to five years, make seven figures. All right. Could be you. I guess we'll see. That's it. I'll see you later.